Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples to show you how to do problems involving current, potential difference, power, and resistance. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on electrical power, as watching that, as well as the other theory videos for electricity, will help you to understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. Question one says that if the current leaving the 12 volt battery is nine amps, find the current in each resistor. Well, here we can start by labeling the resistors. So I'm gonna call the two ohm resistor number one and the four ohm resistor number two. And because it's a parallel circuit, remember the circuit rule for voltage in a parallel circuit, which says that the voltage across each branch is the same as the voltage across the battery. So that means we can say the voltage across each resistor is 12 volts because it's a parallel circuit. This means we can use V equals IR to find the current. So for the first resistor, we're trying to find I1. We know that V1 is 12 volts and R1 is 2 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V1 equals I1 R1. Rearranging for the current I1, we get I1 equals V1 over R1. Substituting in the numbers gives us 12 over 2, which gives a final answer of 6 amps. For the second resistor, we're trying to find I2. We know that V2 is 12 volts and R2 this time is 4 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V2 equals I2 R2. Rearranging this time for I2, we get V2 over R2. So substituting in the numbers gives 12 over 4, which is the same as 3 amps. Question 2 says the current in the series circuit below is 0.5 amps. Find the potential difference across each resistor. Well, just like in question 1, we're going to start by labelling the resistors. So let's call this one number 1, this one number 2, and this one number 3. And we're told that the current in the series circuit is 0.5 amps. And this means that in order to get the current through each of these resistors, we need to know the circuit rule for current in a series circuit. And remember, this is simply that the current is the same at all points. So the current is going to be 0.5 amps flowing through all of these resistors. So to find the potential difference V1, first of all, we're trying to find V1. We know that I1 is 0.5 amps and R1 is 8 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V1 equals I1 R1. Substituting in the numbers gives 0.5 times 8, which gives an answer of 4 volts. For the second resistor, we have V2 is what we're trying to find. I2 is 0.5 amps and R2 is 4 ohms. So writing down our equation again, we have V2 equals I2 R2. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0.5 times 4, which gives us 2 volts. And finally, V3 is what we're trying to find for the last one. We know that I3 is 0.5 amps and R3 is 12 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V3 equals I3 R3. Substituting in the numbers gives 0.5 times 12, which gives us 6 volts. Question 3 says that in the following circuit, the current in the 4 ohm resistor is 1.5 amps. You can see we've got a 9 volt DC source like a battery, we've then got a bulb and a 4 ohm resistor in series, and we've got a voltmeter in parallel with the 4 ohm resistor. And in part A, we're asked what is the reading on the voltmeter? Well, just like in questions 1 and 2, we're going to start by labelling the components. So let's call the resistor here number 1, and let's call the bulb here number 2. So we're trying to find the voltage V1 across this resistor. We know the current in the 4 ohm resistor is 1.5 amps, and we know that R1 is 4 ohms, the resistance of that resistor. So writing down our equation for Ohm's law, we have V1 equals I1 R1. Substituting in the numbers gives 1.5 times 4, which gives a final answer of 6 volts. Part B then says, what is the current in the bulb? Well, remember, the current is the same at all points in a series circuit, so we can say that the current I is equal to 1.5 amps in the bulb. Part C then says, what is the voltage across the bulb? Well, to answer this, we need to know the circuit rule for voltage in a series circuit, and remember this is that in a series circuit, the sum of the voltage across each component is equal to the voltage of the supply. So going back to the circuit diagram, if we know that the voltage across this resistor is 6 volts and the supply has a voltage of 9 volts, then the voltage across the bulb must be 9 minus the 6, which gives us 3 volts. So let's just show that with some working. So we can say that V2 is equal to the supply voltage Vs minus V1, which gives us 9 minus 6, which is 3.0 volts. Lastly, part D says to calculate the power developed in the bulb. So let's call this P2 because we've labelled the bulb as number 2. We know the current I2 is 1.5 amps because it's the same at all points in the series circuit. And we know that V2 is 3.0 volts. So writing down our equation for power in terms of current and voltage, we have P2 equals I2 V2, which is just a form of P equals IV with the little subscripts 2 to keep us right. Substituting in the numbers, we get 1.5 times 3.0, and this gives us an answer of 4.5 watts. Question four says that a physics student sets up the following circuit. So you can see we've got a 40 volt supply. We've then got a five ohm resistor in series with this combination of resistors. So you can see we've got a four ohm and an eight ohm in series there on the top branch. And then we've got a lower resistance of 10 ohms on the bottom branch. And the combination of this is actually in parallel with this one. 
and this whole thing would be a parallel combination, which is then in series with this 5 ohm resistor. It then says for part A to find the current leaving the power supply. So we want to find the current passing through the battery up here. So we'll start by labelling the resistors just like we did in questions 1 to 3. So let's call the 5 ohm resistor number 1, let's call the 4 ohm resistor number 2, the 8 ohm resistor number 3, and the 10 ohm resistor number 4. This is just so we can keep ourselves right with the labelling of variables. So what we essentially want to do here for part A is to find the total current in the circuit. So what we need to do is first find the total combined resistance, so the series combination of the 4 and 8 ohm resistors, and then the parallel combination of that answer with the 10 ohm resistor, and then the final series combination of the 5 ohm resistor with that answer there for that resistance. And then what we can do is calculate the total current using that total resistance and the supply voltage. So for the series combination first, we're trying to find RT. We know that R2 is 4 ohms and R3 is 8 ohms. So we get RT goes R2 plus R3, which is 4 plus 8, which is 12 ohms. For the parallel combination, we know that RT is what we're trying to find. Let's call this series combination just R so we don't confuse ourselves, and R4 is 10 ohms. So we have that 1 over RT equals 1 over R plus 1 over R4, where R was the answer to the series combination, which is 12 ohms. So substituting in our numbers, we get 1 over 12 plus 1 over 10. Using the lowest common denominator method, we can get both of these into the same denominator. So 12 and 10 both go into 60. So we can times the top and bottom of this first fraction by 5 to get it into 60, and we can times the top and bottom of this second fraction by 6 to get it to 60. So we get 5 over 60 plus 6 over 60, which is the same as 11 over 60, and then we can flip both sides to get RT. So we get RT equals 60 over 11, and if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 5.5 ohms. Finally, we can do the series combination where we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 5 ohms, and then we're going to call R the answer to what we've just found, which is 5.5 ohms for the parallel combination. So we have RT equals R1 plus R, which if we substitute in the numbers gives 5 plus 5.5, which gives a final total resistance of 10.5 ohms. So now we know the total resistance, we know the supply voltage, so we can use V equals IR to find the current I. So we're trying to find the total current in the circuit as this is the same as the current leaving the power supply. So we know that the supply voltage VS is 40 volts and the total resistance RT is 10.5 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have VS equals ITRT, where this means supply voltage equals the total current times the total resistance. We can also think about the supply voltage as being almost like a total voltage as well. Rearranging for IT, we have IT equals VS over RT, and substituting in the numbers gives 40 divided by 10.5, which gives a final current value of 3.8 amps. Part B says to find the potential difference across each resistor. Well, firstly, we want to use the equivalent resistance R and a potential divider formula to find V1. So remember number one was the 5 ohm resistor, so we're going to find that potential difference first. And we're going to use what I've called the equivalent resistance R, which is just the answer to the total resistance of this section here, the parallel combination. So we're trying to find V1. We know that R1 is 5 ohms and R is 5.5 ohms. We then know that Vs is 40 volts. So writing down our equation for potential divider circuits when the supply voltage is known, we have V1 equals R1 over R1 plus R times Vs which equals 5 over 5 plus 5.5 times 40, and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 19 volts. Next, we should remember that in a series circuit, the sum of the voltages across the components is equal to the voltage of the supply. And we can use this rule to find what I've called V parallel, which is just the voltage across the equivalent resistance R of 5.5 ohms. So let me show you what that looks like in the circuit diagram. So right now we're going to find the potential difference across this whole section here. And then by doing that, we're able to find the potential difference across each of these branches separately. So to find V parallel, we know that V is equal to Vs minus V1, or in other words, the voltage V parallel is equal to the supply voltage minus our V1 that we just calculated. So we do 40 minus 19, which gives us 21 volts. However, the voltage across the upper and lower branches must be the same because they are in parallel with each other. And remember our circuit rule for voltage in a parallel circuit is that the voltage across each branch is the same as the voltage of the supply. So if I know that this whole thing is 21 volts, 21 volts is on the top branch and 21 volts is also across the bottom branch. So that means I can say straight away that my voltage V4 is 21 volts. So we can say V4 equals 21 volts. So we just need to find V2 and V3 separately here. And let's start by finding V2 using a potential divider equation. So we're trying to find V2. We know that R2 is 4 ohms. We know that R3 is 8 ohms. 
and V is 21 volts. That is the voltage across the parallel combination. So we have V2 is equal to R2 over R2 plus R3 times V, where I'm using twos and threes here because those are the two subscripts for the things that I'm using. So putting in the numbers, we have four divided by four plus eight times 21, which gives an answer of seven volts for voltage V2. And remember the voltage across that branch is 21 volts. So if we know that V2 is seven volts, then V3 must be 21 minus the seven volts. So we can write this as V3 equals V minus V2, which is 21 minus 7, which gives us 14 volts for V3. Part C then says to find the current in each resistor. Well, in order to find the current in the 5 ohm resistor, first of all, number 1, we can say that I1 is equal to 3.8 amps. And this is because it's a series circuit, remember. So let's look back at the picture. So remember in part A, we found that the current leaving the battery was 3.8 amps, which means that the current passing along here is 3.8 amps, and then it splits up across this parallel combination. But then back at this point, it joins together again. So we have 3.8 amps flowing through the 5 ohm resistor and back through the supply. So that means our current I1 is equal to 3.8 amps. We can then use our answers to part B to help for the remaining resistors because we've just worked out the potential difference across each of the resistors. So we want to find the current in the upper and lower branches, i.e. we want to find out what this 3.8 amps is being split up into in the parallel combination. So let's deal with the upper branch first of all, which has the two resistors on it. And I'm trying to find the current. I know that the voltage of that upper branch is 21 volts. And I know that the resistance of those two resistors in series is 12 ohms. Because looking back at the picture, you can see we have a 4 ohm and an 8 ohm resistor in series. So we've got the total series combination of that, which is 12 ohms. And we know the voltage across that branch is 21 volts. So we can find out what the current in this branch is by doing a V equals IR calculation. So writing down our equation, we have V equals IR. Rearranging for I, we get I equals V over R. Substituting in the numbers gives us 21 divided by 12. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.75 amps. We can therefore say the current I2 and the current I3 in resistors R2 and R3 are the same, and these are equal to 1.75 amps. Lastly, to find the current in the lower branch, we know that this current is 1.75 amps, and we know that this current over here is 3.8 amps. So if this is 3.8 amps flowing through the battery and along here, then if 1.75 amps of that current goes along the upper branch, then we must have 3.8 minus the 1.75 flowing along the lower branch. So for the lower branch, we can say I4 equals IT minus I, so we get 3.8 minus 1.75, which equals 2.05 amps. Lastly, we're asked to find the power dissipated in each resistor. So for the 5 ohm resistor, number 1. So for the 5 ohm resistor, the first resistor, we're trying to find P1. We know that I1 is 3.8 amps and R1 is 5 ohms. So we can use a form of P equals I squared R with the subscripts of 1. So we have P1 equals I1 squared R1. Substituting in the numbers gives 3.8 squared times 5. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 72 watts. For the 4 ohm resistor, doing a similar thing, we have P2 is what we're trying to find, I2 is 1.75 amps, and R2 is 4 ohms. So we can write down our equation, again, P equals I squared R, but in the form P2 equals I2 squared R2, substituting in the numbers, gives 1.75 squared times 4, which if you put into our calculator, should give you an answer of 12 watts. Next, we have the 8 ohm resistor, so this is P3, and we know that I3 is 1.75 amps, and R3 is 8 ohms, so we get P3 equals I3 squared R3, substituting in the numbers gives 1.75 squared times 8, which gives a final answer of 25 watts. And lastly, for the 10 ohm resistor on the lower branch, we have P4 is what we're trying to find, I4 is equal to 2.05 amps, and R4 equals 10 ohms, so writing down our equation, we have P4 equals I4 squared R4, substituting in the numbers, gives 2.05 squared times 10, which if you put into your calculator should give you an answer of 42 watts. Lastly, question five says that a series circuit is set up as shown below. We have a 12 volt battery or supply and a 100 kilo ohm resistor. It then says calculate the power supplied to the resistor. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the power P. We know the voltage V is 12.0 volts and the resistance R is 100 kilo ohms, which we can rewrite as 100 times 10 to the three ohms. So writing down our equation for power relating voltage and resistance, we get P equals V squared over R. Substituting in the numbers gives 12.0 squared divided by 100 times 10 to the three, which if you put into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.4 times 10 to the minus three watts. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.